Okay, well, do Don't give me two minutes, I'll be done. Please volume. No, volume is completely no. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, man. I'm fine now. Hello, I think that the network is not You are in the show. Only everyone can see and hear you. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay now. Check. Mm. You are in the show. Hello. Hello. Bless our challenges here, but we are working towards it to connect to Reverend Philip Adelako. Please just stay with us. We are still challenges from his side. So please just stay tuned oh. on the line as we are trying to solve the problem. Thank you. We are connecting to him very soon. So please stay tuned. For those of you that are waiting for this broadcast, please. Pause. Oh. Sir. No, not in your Yes, sir. You are now in the show, sir. Hello, sir. Can you hear me, sir? No. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, I can hear you.
Am you clearly? Okay, I can hear you. A castle. Yes, tell us. Only program, Lawa. Okay, I've got a pastor. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, sorry, sir. Can you hear me, sir? I can hear you. I can hear you. John is born. Can you hear me, sir? Okay. Yeah. Sir. Uh, we are already live on this program. Please, uh, apologies to everyone listening to us. Sorry about that. You know, we're just trying to establish the connection to Reverend Philip Adelako from Johannesburg. Sorry about that. If you're already on the line, please make sure you share this program. It's going to be a very interactive section on this radio station today. This is the African Portal Radio, your one-stop media house where everyone has a say. We already have somebody on the line, sir, that we also like to say hello to you, sir. Uh, we have somebody on the line. Uh, sorry, good day, sir. How are you, sir? Who is on the line? Uh, can I... Are you hearing us, sir? I'm hearing. I'm hearing. Okay. 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 Please mention your name, where you're calling from, and your question to uh, Pastor Reverend Philip Adelako. They are here. I mean, talks. everyone is listening. After it's listening, the full house is here with us, listening to the conversation. Who am I speaking to? Yeah, um, my, name, my name is uh, I'm from United States. From United States. I, yeah, I saw this advert on Facebook right now, and I can't see that. Like, you know, very well. I didn't hear. I just know. Wow! Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. Uh, sir, somebody is calling from US. Adewale is on the line with me from US. He saw the poster and. Bankole, okay. Bankole from US. Uh, I just want to say hello to you, sir. Uh, you can speak. Uh, Pastor is hearing you. You can speak, sir. Pastor is hearing you. Okay, man of God. Good morning, sir. How are you, sir? I'm very good. This is my brother from here. Um, I'm calling. I want to. I want to join in this for you. I'm going to. Oh, really? Really? This is Banky. Banky. Oh, is that Banky? Banky, Banky, sir. Ah, long time. How is it? <laughs> Uh, go. 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 Let's go. Let's go. Congratulations oh, on your son's graduation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wow. I was family. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Bank. We will not be able to. Uh, I know you just want to say hello to Pastor. Please, the only people you can do for us, go to the Africa Porter group. Like the page, watch it, watch it, and share it. Let it go viral. Call everyone in US to listen to this conversation. This is just the beginning of this conversation. So please do us a favor, log in, be part of it. It's live on Facebook as we speak. Thank you very much, and God bless you. We are expecting a lot of calls, as I know that uh, Pastor Philip is one of the popular pastor in Johannesburg and in South Africa. So I know. We are going to have a lot of calls on this show this afternoon. Thanks to everyone and thanks to Mr. Van Collida calling from US. For those of you in South Africa, in Victoria, in Johannesburg, wherever you are, you want to speak to Pastor, you better wake up. The number to call on is 027-8424-8384 is the number to call. Thank you Excuse. very, very much. Uh, wow. Everyone listening to us, I just want to thank you once again for joining us on this show. Sir, Welcome to the African Portal Studio. It's a great pleasure, uh, privilege to have you in this studio this afternoon. I really appreciate this. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you for the privilege to be part of what you are doing. Thank you for the invite. You're more than welcome, sir. As sir, we are going to be having a conference that have to do with churches in Africa, in South Africa, where you are. Uh, but before 
before I do that, I like to do this first. I would like you to introduce yourself to people. Uh, let me take it this way. Sir, who is Pastor Reverend Philip Adiola Adela? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, just as you have said, uh, greetings to all the viewers across the nations of the earth. And uh, thank you for being part of this uh, broadcast. As you have heard, I'm Pastor Philip Adiola Adilako. I'm the senior pastor of the SEPTA Global Ministries, located here in uh, Tom Fontaine, Johannesburg, South Africa. I'm married with four kids. And um, I think that should be enough, except you want to ask more things about me. Okay. Uh, 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 anyway, we, I, I would not like us to dwell in, the, in that, uh, because what we have ahead of us is so much. We have a lot of things to talk about. Uh, for people listening to us, you heard it yourself. That is Pastor Philip there for you. Uh, he's pastoring one of the largest uh, black church in Johannesburg Central. Ah, that's what I know. Okay, sir, uh, let's take it this way. Uh, let's quickly look at the situation of what is happening currently in the world today, most especially regarding the pandemic, the COVID-19. What does COVID-19 mean to you? Uh, well, uh, as we have been hearing, is a virus. That means it's a disease. We all know it's a deadly disease that has actually taken so many lives. And according to reports, we all know that it began in, uh, in China. But uh, from my standpoint, whatever is not good is, is, is bad. And whatever is bad is traceable to the devil. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, COVID-19 is one of the weapons, it's one of the weapons in the hand of the devil to wipe away lives. And unfortunately, it came unaware, it came suddenly, it hit the globe unprepared. So uh, it's a disease, it is a virus as we have been told, and it's a deadly disease that has claimed so many lives. So outside other things that we read in different platforms of social media, the only thing I'm still holding on right now is that it's a virus. Uh, I think it was last week I read something again from Italy that it's not a virus, it's a bacteria, all manner of news. But that is yet to be confirmed. So COVID-19 mm. is a virus, a killer virus that has actually claimed so many lives. Mm. Mm. Thank, you. Thank you, sir, for, for that uh, response. So I just want to know quickly, do you believe this exists? It's real. It, it, it exists. We 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 will be we be we be uh, our thoughts will be very foolish if we think it does not exist, because uh, if if there is something that is claiming lives on a daily basis across the nations of the earth, I'm talking about hundreds of thousands of lives, and uh, we want to tell ourselves that it does not exist, then something must be wrong with us. COVID-19 is real. COVID-19 is real. It's real. And uh, we cannot do away with that. We can't shy away with that. Hmm. Oh, thank you. Thank you for putting the light there. Thank you so much. Sir, uh, I, want to, I want to take you through a lot of routes because we are going to touch many things. Many things. Okay. But it's going to be spiritual and it's going to be physical we're going to go practical and we're going to go theory so if you say it is assist and you believe that you believe all the reports you see on the tv and stuff like that uh have you seen anyone being affected by this uh personally 
in a personal yeah. contact, I've not. But I have had you know testimonies. You know anyone? From, no, 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 no. I don't know anyone that has been affected. But I've had testimonies from the news. People give testimony of testimonies of how they recovered, those who recovered from it. I actually have a member of our church who lost uh, one of the people he, knew, he, he, he knows to COVID-19. So I might not have met anybody or known anybody that has been infected or uh, has been killed by this uh, uh, virus, but I I've, I've, I've listened to people who recovered and I have somebody right now who has lost somebody that he, he knows. And uh, I think there's another person who told me that one of his mates, they went to school together. The guy stays in the States. That is the USA. He's already dead now through this virus. So it's actually very real. We cannot, we, there's nobody that can come out and say that uh, coronavirus is not real. If the entire globe is shut down because of this uh, single virus, then we cannot say that it does not exist. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for that. Thank you very much for that. Sir, let us look at it this way. The church, I mean, you have close to 500 congregants in your church. And uh, you only few people tell you that maybe they have people being killed in this and stuff like that. Let's look at it from Johannesburg, where you are, and in South Africa. Are you in Johannesburg, in Tom Fontaine, where you are? Have you report? Have you got any reports or recorded of any incident of anyone denied? Not at all. Not at all. Uh, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Okay. Thank you very uh, much. But that in the church, I, I believe that that does not mean that does not mean that there is not. Because uh, I remember two weeks ago, I was with one of, one of our brothers who told me that uh, they have a certain number of cases in uh, Satran Hospital, which is very, very close to my house. So, but personally, I have not come in contact with anyone who has been infected by COVID-19 or, or uh, neither do I know any of my uh, church members who who has reported that he has a relation or somebody associated with him or her that has been infected. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. I'm just multitasking. There's a lot of people on the call that want to get to the line to speak to you. So I'm just trying to put the line on hold so that they will not destroy the conversation we are having. We are just laying the foundation. Sir, when okay. we look at this COVID-19, especially in Africa where we are, a lot of people say that the approach the African government give to it is totally wrong by asking to close down the business, shutting down everywhere. And I mean, that Africa is not designed to be locked down because of our way of life. Do you agree with that? Absolutely no. Now, this is my principle. If there is uh, an approach that the government has embarked on, and uh, certain individual organization uh, is saying that that approach is wrong, is there a suggested approach that such individual is bringing on board or such organization? Because you must understand that it's not only Africa that is locked down. The entire globe is locked down. So if it is just Africa, then we can understand. But the entire globe, mo most powerful nations in the world have been locked down for months now. So I don't know which other approach or approaches that uh, the government should should take. So personally, I don't uh, I don't think that is right. Uh, in my in my in my own 
in my mind, I think the government is doing uh, what it can do to protect lives. And uh, to the best of my knowledge, the government is trying, and all we can do is just to cooperate with the government. That's all. The shutting down of businesses and uh, organizations and worship houses is just to protect life, to save life. And I think it's a good step mm. to start with. Hmm. Okay, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, a lot of people during that, uh, the lockdown, when you say you agree, that is the only way to go. Some people say that, why government's now calling for people to go back to work and be wearing masks and they putting sanitizer? If mask is working and sanitizer is working, social distance is working, why don't we implement that at the beginning of this? Instead of letting us lock down, then we lose two ways. Even during the lockdown, we are still reporting cases and people are still dying. And business as well is affected. Ordinary citizens of Africa, they've been affected. That why don't they let us go through the route of using the mask and using the sanitizer and practice uh, I mean, social distance? That is the suggestion somebody makes. Do, do, you, do you think that would, should be the way to go? Well, you see, when things happen like this, we think differently. Number one thing I want us to understand is that this pandemic happened suddenly. Nobody was preparing for it. Nobody was expecting it. Whether government of any nation or even the church, there was no single person that was expecting that this kind of a thing is going to happen this period. So when it came, the government had, had to sit and look into the best way to, to actually tackle this. Now, now, it takes time to plan what should be the strategy or strategies that we are going to adopt to save the lives of our people. And I think that is why the lockdown started first. Please, you understand, especially in Africa, the kind of mentality we have. So if the government is holding meetings and they have left the entire citizen of the nation to just continue business as usual, can you imagine how many lives will have been lost now? Now, look at it this way. Even with the lockdown, people were dying. People are still dying. Can you now imagine if there wasn't a lockdown at all, or there is no lockdown at all, that everybody just continues uh, as usual? Then it means even the number of the deaths that have been recorded now will have been multiplied greatly. So I believe the first step that the government took by executing lockdown is, 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 is okay. Now it, it is it is after that they went it was after that they went back and now begin to see how things can be put in place gradually so that lives can be preserved. Understand this has to do with lives, and it's very important. It is when we are alive we are going to church. It is when we are alive we are running businesses. It is when we are alive we are doing other activities. If life, those who are dead now, there's, there's no business to run. There's no church to go. So it is very, very, very important. The Bible says wisdom is profitable to direct. Thank you. Okay, sir. I, I don't want us to dwell so much on that, but there's something I have of that. So people, in the case of Africa as a continent, that we should not say that we are not aware because this arrived three months before in China, even though that earth organization failed to cross China economy down, because that is what should have been done, according to people, that they should have crossed China economy down so that the virus will not get out of, uh, of uh, I mean, China to other parts of the world. But having said that, people say that Africa have about three months before this arrived here. That Africa will have put a measure in place to make sure that 
nobody flew into africa from any of the part of the world that this disease is already taking place because like they give an i mean an example that when ebola break out in africa they're closing the economy or there's nobody going in into the part where it's happening like in congo and some other part of africa that's why african own is different why don't they close china economy down completely instead of now that you are closing the world economies down the reason why i'm to that route sir because i know you are not an economist but i understand the fact that the church have a very big role to play in the whole thing and it's because of the absence of the church because the church has not been carried along with this conversation the church have not been carried along with consultations they are making decisions and the church is not be spiritually involved uh, and the people are saying that at least they have up to three months for them to prepare for this is it that not to get in even if it's get in for them to look at the approach that we address this in case it gets to the africa sir in just one word do you think that narrative correct uh maybe and maybe not because when you look at the approach of these uh uh countries you are you are you are talking about we are talking about developed countries here these are developed countries and even with the lockdown the person who is talking should not say that china was in lockdown there was there are only two or three or four countries that i know they were not locked down. Even US, that is a country that can be considered as one of the most powerful country, countries in the world, was locked down. Even with that lockdown, can you imagine the number of victims that the United States has recorded? So that Africa should not be locked down, I don't know where that is coming from. Because if you consider, even with the lockdowns I've said, we still have very serious level of casualties. Can you not imagine if that didn't happen? Even with the lockdown, you know, look at look look at look look at it around. Did did people actually from the start right now? Did people actually obey the lockdown? No, mm. no. So that is how Africa is. So if there, 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 there isn't a lockdown then, it will have been disastrous. Because everybody will just be doing what they like. And we'll be losing hundreds of thousands of life every day. Mm. So, and talking about the church, if we have to bring church into this, it, we, we, we have to be very, very, very strategic. We understand that the church has serious, serious role to play in the community. But in what context? Because we all have different opinions and uh, ideologies about, about, uh, about the church now, and politics, which is the government. So in what context are we talking about the church? I believe we'll still get into that. Definitely, sir, definitely. And let, me, let me take you through these routes. So people, uh, even though the government take the routes they take, which is already been taken, uh, so people said, how come upon all the great men of God that we have in Africa, and I mean, in all, I mean, the parts of the world, how come no one sees this coming? Uh, <laughs> you know, when we lack spiritual understanding at times, we talk like that. This is what the Bible says. The Bible says secret things belong to God. But the things that are revealed, it means there are things that are not revealed, are for us and for our children. Are you getting what I'm saying? So I don't I'm think... I'm not, I don't think anybody should be blaming any man of God that how come they didn't see it. What if God did not reveal it? It is what God reveals that we see. It is what God reveals that we know. No matter how powerful any man of God is, 
until God gives him a revelation, he cannot know, he cannot see. So we cannot begin to now blame anybody now that how come they didn't see it, how come they didn't know. That if you are a child of God, you are also supposed to know. It's not only men of God that are supposed to know. As a child of God, you're supposed to know. Are you not praying? So nobody should blame any, any great man of God. So it is mm. what God mm. reveals that we know. Mm. Thank you, sir. You, 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 you've, you've answered my question, there. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, with the congregation close to 500, how are you coping uh, in, in times such as this? Even though the government said they've uh, easing the things and there's going to be 50 people gathering together at a time. And uh, before I go that, how are you coping? Is this not affecting the church financially? Uh, de uh, definitely, it's, 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 it, it has really affected the church. It's affecting the church, but we believe God for, for restoration. Uh, on our side, we just uh, uh, advise our members to obey all the rules, all the precautions, the restrictions that the government has, has uh, given to us and not disobey what the government has asked us to do. And uh, we try as much as possible to reach our members through the online services that we have been doing. And uh, I believe that has also been helping for those who are able to to connect because we must realize that to, to to do live streaming you are not the only one concerned here the members we have to buy data and get connected and we have several of the members who are struggling to leave so not not to not talk about them having money to go and buy data some of them we actually prefer to use the money they have to buy food than to go and uh, by data to be online. And that is why also as a church, in our side, we have compressed our two and a half hours to three hour service to one hour because we have understanding that people are using money to buy data. So staying online for two hours, one and a half hours, uh, uh, we, we not make sense to me. As a pastor, we don't do that. The another thing we do is that we try to check on our members to know how they are fearing. We, in our church, we have that system in place and it has been really working for us. Mm, mm. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, this is the African Portal Radio. For those of you that you are listening to us for the first time, this is the African Portal Radio, your one-stop media house where everyone has a say. We are your lion voice. We are coming to you live from Pretoria here in South Africa. I have one of the great man of God, the seasoned man of God with me in the studio. Pastor Philip Adelako is with me in the studio that we are having conversations. So we are going to the part of this conversation that is going to be more deeper and more serious. Uh, all we've been doing is just to lay a foundation and for us to see where exactly and to know your view towards this. Sir, what is the role of the church in time such as this? Thank you. It's very, very simple. Prayer. There's nothing the church can do more than prayer. That is the best way the church can go. That 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 is how simple I am going to. I'm going to. We we're praying for the nation where we found ourselves. We're praying for Africa. We're praying for the global community. We're praying for our members and everyone that has been actually infected by this deadly virus. We keep them in our prayers. For, for now, I think that is what the church can do. Hmm. Thank you, sir. Uh, as, a, as a father that has so many spiritual daughter and son, what are you doing personally to assist them in times such as this? Now, thank you. Like I said, we have uh, some systems in our church to reach our members from the time in your the, own in uh, your own personal in your own personal capacity sir not just that's what i'm, I'm saying about personal. yes sir 
Yeah, from the start, uh, especially with the upkeep of those who are uh, less privileged in the, our church, we try as much as possible to reach them with uh, groceries so that they they can have something to to feed on. So we do uh, we do that times and again, and. Uh, our ministry is divided into four arms, which have leaders. So we, we, I, I instructed the leaders to make sure they are in contact with all the members of their groups and the reports are back to me to know and uh, the, the welfare of our members. And uh, I want to thank God that up till now, in our church, we, we have rest about that. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much. A lot have been said about you, how you've been uh, supportive and uh, uh, helping the people. Because we will do our investigation as well before we actually conclude that we should have this conversation. Sir, let's take it this way. The church have been affected in one way or the other. How long do you think it will take the church to recover from this? Uh, I don't think there's anybody that can that can say this is how, it, how long it will take. But I know that uh, the church will recover. As we continue mm. to trust God and to pray, definitely restoration is the lot of the church. The church will recover. But how long? Uh, I don't think there's anybody who can, who can talk about that. Thank you so much, sir. For those of you that you have your question that you want to throw to uh, Pastor Philip Adela, it's open now. You can call in now. The number is on the screen. You can call me on the number that is going on your screen. Call on that number. Let's have conversation. I know there's a lot of people on the line that would like to say one or two things. Uh, please feel free to call in. Let's have this conversation together. It's going to be a very interesting conversation. Sir, uh, somebody just sent me a message that I should ask you these questions. Uh, the person said that as government already is in the, uh, 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 the lockdown to level three, and uh, the church is allowed to hold service of more than me, not more than 50 people. Uh, are you going to just have 50 people service and finish, or are you gonna break the church into series? Or what is the uh, what is the system that you are putting in place that everybody coming to the church you are protected and notified? Okay, thank you. It's very simple. Uh, number one, we thank God and the government for at least giving that opportunity to return back to congregational worship. Now, the first thing we do uh, is that we don't encourage children to come. Because children are also part of the church. When we have the attendance in every service, children are also counted. So right now, we don't encourage the children to come for the services. Number two, those who are on medication, we don't encourage them. In fact, we ask them to stay home because they are more vulnerable to the attack of this COVID-19. If anybody is on medication for any sickness or disease or terminal disease, it is advisable for such to remain at home. So that is the first step that we have taken. The number two, uh, we have decided to break our service, our service into sessions. Like in our church, we are going to be having up to four services. Now, the issue is this. We send message to our members and we wait for their response to know who and who will be returning for service. Because obviously, not everybody will like to come. In the time of Gideon, when he was going to war, 
it, God said to, to Gideon, tell the people, those who are fearful should stay at home. It is not impossible for us to have such people in the church, those who are afraid. People like that will not show up. So you realize that when you remove uh, the children, you remove those who may be uh, with any ailment, who are under any treatment, and uh, those who will, who might say, no, let me stay at home until everything, until everything is okay. Maybe we'll just be having 200 or less, less than that. So if we're going to be having services on Sunday, it means with us, we'll have about four services. One, one hour is okay. I told my leaders that if I can do one hour service on Facebook, in our live streaming, what stops us from doing it uh, with this uh, opportunity reality. To, to, to worship together? So that is where we are. And uh, apart from that, we are we are we are consulting with uh, a company that will sanitize our facilities, and uh, we buy the testing kit, to, uh, the, the thermometer to check the temperature of everyone that will be coming into into the facility. Actually, we are going through all the uh, rules and the precautions that the government has laid down. We are going to have register. Everybody that comes in, we take. In fact, we, we, we are planning to get a form. Everybody will fill form, your ID number, your passport number, where you stay, everything. We have all the details. So we are actually getting prepared for it. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for that uh, response that is very great and very detailed. Sir, uh, let's quickly check this. I will, this will be a kind of preaching because I will take you to the root of you need to also uh, release the word of God, prophesy to the new month, and as well declare the word of God for the new month because today is the last day of the month and uh, today is the last Sunday. We are going into the other part of the year, which is beginning of June, and uh, it's very significant today in the history of man as we are moving from the last Sunday to the new era whereby the government put the system in place, things are changing, people, some people are going back to work and so like But before I do that, sir, there is a time in the history of, uh, of the people of God in the Bible that it was recorded in the land and there is a single man of God that came out and declared the word of God. Do we still have the man of God that can hear the word of God? in times such as this? Uh, thank you. We have great men of God. Great men of God. But you see, we need to have understanding of spiritual things that is not actually about the man of God. It's about God. Any man of God can make declarations. It does not have the ability to answer it. Any man of God, no matter how great you are, you can pray. You are not the one that guarantees the answer. The Bible says the preparation of the lips is of man. The preparation of the heart, I beg your pardon, is of man. But the answer of the lips comes from God. So we have great men of God who can make declarations. Not even men of God. We have children of God that have the hands of God upon their lives. But the thing is, it's not about any man of God. It's not about any great man of God. It's about God. So both men of God, both women of God, both believers, all of us have to raise our voices to God in prayer for mercy. That is all we have to do. Because if, if we begin to mention that uh, we have this man, we have that woman, why can't they make declarations? Every believer has authority to make declarations. Hmm. That's what I believe. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I, I, I listened to you this morning during your online service, and you are declaring some word that you are saying that the coronavirus is enemy. I hear you falsely saying that the coronavirus is an enemy that comes to kill 
and destroy. Uh, what That's what right. gave you that? Uh, is that a spiritual understanding of it, or is that how you say it? Uh, that's right. Uh, please, the plan of God for man is a good one. Mm. The Bible says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, God speaking said, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, say the Lord. Thought of peace and not thought of evil. To give you an expected end. So anything that is not good is not traceable to God. This is how I used to say, if it is not good, it is not God. And if it is not God, it means it must be the devil. And the devil is an enemy. The Bible says he came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Anything that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy is an enemy. And that is what coronavirus has been doing since inception. Coronavirus has claimed so many lives, rendered some children fatherless, some children motherless, brought sorrow and weeping and mourning into many families. How else can we describe coronavirus? It's an enemy. Anything that is against our peace, anything that is against our rest is an enemy. So coronavirus is an enemy. Mm. Mm. Th th thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. I, 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 I thank you for that response. Sir, during this time that uh, the government already gave chance to be gathering together 50 and nothing more than that, I was still going to have a deliverance time whereby we'll be laying hands on people and do some spiritual exercise and doing deliverance and stuff like that. I was still going to have such time. Uh, like I said, scripture says that wisdom is profitable to direct. And I think our religious leaders have also mentioned it. There's not going to be anything like that. There's not going to be laying on of ends. Uh, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> There's not going to be an, Even uh, our worship, it is still mandated that we put on our first masks. We have to ob still observe social distancing. The reason why we decide to come back is because we have a big hall that even if it is 100 people, the social distance can still be okay. Not to talk about 50. If we have, if we have a small place, personally, I will not, I will not, I will not call for the reopening of the church, of our church. So there's not going to be anything like deliverance and all those lean of ends with us. And I think our religious leaders in this nation have also made that known. So there are a lot of things. There's not, there's not, we, we are not even going to have time for that. We are not going to have time for that because we are only going to be having one hour service at most, one hour, 15 minute service. Mm. Thank you, sir. And there will not be anointing service, not be anointing service and the, the uh, Holy Communion the, service. The Holy Ghost himself will be anointing us from heaven. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that response. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Those of you that are listening to us, Pastor Philip Adelako is with me in the studio. We are having conversation. This is just the beginning. Don't get out of this conversation. Sit down and listen to it. It's very packed. There's still a lot. So is he going to address you? Is he going to release the word? Is he going to give you the message of this time? Sir, do you think that this pandemic is a result of our sin? Or is just part of the end time signs? Uh, thank you. Number one, I will discourage us of concluding that it's because of our sin. Okay. We have a case in the Bible of a man that was born blind. And the disciples of Jesus asked Jesus, why is this man born blind? The mentality is that if something bad happened, we quickly, because of our religious uh, 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 understanding, we quickly associate it with sin. 
It happened also in the Bible days. They asked Jesus, who did sin? They will ask him to the point that, is this this man? Where will the man have sinned? Because he was just born blind. Or his parents. And when Jesus looked at the disciples, Jesus said, no, nobody sinned. This has been allowed to happen so that the glory of God might be made manifest. We have also the case of Lazarus in the Bible. The same situation. So I don't actually subscribe to that idea of theology that COVID-19 is as a result of the sin of humanity. Far from it. What about the righteous that have died? What about those who are living a holy life that have died? What do we say about that? So it has nothing to do with the sin of humanity as far as I'm concerned. Now, number two, if we study the Bible very well, uh, from the epistle of Paul to Timothy and uh, Matthew chapter 24, we will look at the signs of the end time. I can agree with you that this is just one of it. It's far from it. There are other happenings. There are other things that the Bible records will be happening in the end times. It's not only perennial time. But we are so much centered on perennial time because of how our minds have been configured. Some have even said, Jesus is coming one more time. Jesus is coming in two more time. You know, I said, this is nothing compared to what is going to be happening. This is just, this is just one of it. They are just things that have been prophesied that will be happening in the last days. So I believe that is just one of the one of the happenings of the end time. And it's not all of it. This is just a minute part of it. So that is my understanding about the situation. Thank you, sir. Uh, Pastor. Uh, Peter Ajay is looking at you and he say, if it's not good, it's not God. Also, That's Ellen right. is looking at you from Kaduna. He said, glory. Uh, a lot of people are sending messages to me uh, privately as well that they were giving kudos to you for the uh, respond and uh, what you are saying there. Sir, I agree with you uh, on how, what you said, but let's see what the Bible says about this. What do you have for people listening to us from the word of God? Uh, keep keep faith, keep keep hope. I believe uh, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs that surely there is an end, and the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. There is nothing that has a beginning that does not have a head. It's only God. So coronavirus came in one day. We are going to open our eyes one day to realize that we are totally free from it. We just have to keep on believing God, keep on crying to God for mercy and supernatural intervention. And I know we serve a God that answers prayer and will answer the cry of his children. Very soon, we will return fully with testimonies of victory over the demon of coronavirus in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. I follow you a lot and I see the strength and the energy. Sometimes I ask myself, where is this energy coming from? Especially the way you are preaching. I, I, I feel like I want to fall out of the chair sometimes the way and the manner. <laughs> You, you flow when you sir what 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 can i say what is the secret behind this boldness of yours uh <laughs> number one let me let me attribute that to the grace of god it will it will interest you that sometimes i ask myself where is this energy coming from but that is how I am given. Another pastor may just stand in one place and be talking as if he's having a discussion with people and you see the same flow of the anointing. 
But what I want to say is that that is the way I am giving. I'm just trying to be myself, not to be somebody else. So, and I give glory to God for that. So that is it's just the grace of God. Mm, mm, mm. And I, I, I thank God for that. Uh, sir, let's take it this way before we call it a day. We will still be bringing you back in some other time that we'll be having conversation because of our time. Uh, you know, time is running and there's nobody that can stop time. Sir, That's right. have you ever in your life facing any challenges from the fellow men of God? <laughs> uh, that is a tricky one. Uh, please, I want us to understand something, that when we say somebody is a man of God, we must understand that he's also a man. So I see it in that line. I've, I've faced, I've faced uh, more than what I can begin to explain. But uh, I thank God because he has not actually given me, uh, uh, he, he has helped me to be able to handle issues so that I don't live in bitterness. I have faced a lot from fellow men of God and I don't hold it against them because they are also men. Thank you, sir. I, I I I like that. I like that. This is going to be this is going to be very surprising, but I don't want you to take it personal. Some people look at you and say, "Ah, no, 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 no." Uh, Philip Adelako is no go area. Uh, deal with him. Uh, you just have to make sure that it's like you want to eat with devil. Your spoon must be very long. Uh, why are people saying that? Is it, does that mean that uh, you are not approachable or you are not friendly? Uh. You know, sometimes your disposition make people to just uh, 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 conclude about you. I know uh, people who said that are not close to me. There are people who see me from far. Let me give you an example. I observe in our church that children, when they are still small, once they see me, they fidget, they run, they cry. But as they grow up, they begin to run towards me. And I said to my wife, you know what happened? The way I minister, the way I preach, is what is actually scaring some of, this, some of these children. You realize that by the time they are, they are growing, immediately after the church, I love children, I love kids so much. Immediately after service, you see almost all the children at the church running to where I see it. It will take my protocols to now be carrying them. Sometimes I ask them, leave them. When I'm going to my office, I stop, I help all of them. But these are children who used to run away as soon as they saw me then when they were still small. You realize that there are people who see me far away and uh, they just conclude that this is how it is. Maybe because I don't relate with some people. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's just, uh, but uh, you expect that because uh, even Jesus was said to have visible. <laughs> so it's not new. No, no the, the reason I'm asking, some people seem to say that you have a very, very uh, difficult principle uh, when it's coming to dealing with people and uh, stuff like that. And, uh, with time that I've spent with you, I mean, I've had a lot of time to spend with you and you know, I've listened to you, I've studied you far and near, and I keep on asking myself, what exactly is wrong that people are complaining about about this man? Have you ever sat down and do that kind of uh, check and balancing on, on such uh, comments? Anyway, when you hear such comments about yourself, you also have to do uh, a checkup. You understand? Uh Yes, principle. In principle, I will tell you that uh, because of the way I was I was brought up, my father was a teacher. He was a disciplinarian, and uh, that is how he brought us up. Uh, so I, if if something 
has to be done, I want it to be done right. And I'm going to insist that it be done right. So that's my standpoint. So I have principles that guide what I do. So people around me have actually learned to understand that, that if I say this is what we have to do, we have to do it well. What, what, what has to be done must be done well. I think that is one area I've been having challenges with people. But uh, just recently, I, I just told myself, let me just relax. Uh, let them do their best. They will take it from, <laughs> we take it from there. So, is a, uh, <laughs> is a, but excellence, you, excellence but. is still my pursuit. And if that is the kind of a person I, I like you that. are, if if that is the kind of person you are, obviously you are going to have problem with people, especially those mm. who have this uh, mediocre mentality, those who have this. Who carry this mediocrity in their head? You're going to have a big problem. Hmm. Th thank you, sir. Thank you. I've, I've listened to you a lot, and you have one word that you used to say in those days that if anything worth doing, it's worth doing well. Doing one well. of the thank principles you. that I actually attribute and get from you, sir. You said last time that uh, you will not include the children to be coming to the church, and the government is saying that the grade seven and grade twelve is going back to school from tomorrow. Don't you think that we need those children in church than the adults? Uh, you see, what we have to understand is adults can take care of themselves, but it will take adults to take care of the children. And when you bring children together, if I've ever spent time in the crash, you realize that it is actually very difficult, especially when it's time for them to play. So the reason why we are so, why we decided that we we'll keep the, our children at home is to save lives. It's not because of anything. It's to save lives. And there is no distance in the spirit. Why we fellowship together as adults in the church We'll be praying for them. And it's just for a few, just one hour. We'll be back home with them. I mean, to, to meet them. Mm. Now, if you if you look at the students that are going back to school, look at serious work that the government is doing right now. Even with it, a lot of parents are still saying that no, that their children will not go to school. So if that is the case with school, then we can make choices when it comes to the church that our children should stay at home. It is just for now. Mm, mm. Okay, Th thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, we will be looking forward to that and we will be definitely be following up uh, how it goes. We are praying that this will be out of our way anytime soon. Sir, it's, a, it's my great pleasure to have you on this real art talk to have this conversation there are some certain things i didn't plan for or some questions i didn't plan to ask you but god keep on dropping it in my mind and that is why i throw it to you so my apology if anyway i have had some questions no, no, that no, no. is more uh, 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 uh sir before i let you go is there anything happening in the world that you want to stop now come again is there anything that is happening in the world that you are not happy about and you want it to stop now? In the entire world. In the entire world. It's just this pandemic. <laughs> it's the pandemic. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there That's anything the that is happening in the world that you are very, you are very, very happy about it and you want it to continue? Yes. Uh, you see, many a times we have good in the back. You realize that it was within darkness that God called out light. You realize that from the start of this pandemic, a lot of people, a lot of nations have been turning to Jesus. That interests me so much. I see people go out in the street in different nations across, across the globe, lifting up their voices to pray to God. That's, uh, that's, that's, that caught my attention. That is so interesting. For me, it's, it's great. 
So, and I want to see uh, 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 that continue. So, so one, you realize that within the context of the pandemic, souls are being won into the kingdom. That interests me so much. And I want that to continue. Okay, th thank you very much, sir. We are, we are, thank you very much, sir. We already spent beyond the time, but uh, let me just quickly cut you from one of the response that you gave me last time. When you say that this can be signs of the end time, but it's far to what is coming. Uh, uh, have you seen anything coming that is going to be worse than this or what we what should be expecting in the future? Uh, because of our time, we uh, have gone into the scripture. I didn't sir, you can see... do that, sir. You can, you can do that, <laughs> sir, because uh, the, this, uh, com this conversation is not only for this generation. It will be for incoming generation as well. So we are, at, we, are at, we are putting this together to make sure that we have all the answers being answered accurately, all the questions being answered accurately. Okay, I didn't see, I didn't sleep and see anything uh, to be called a revelation. But I, I am, I am dedicated to the scriptures. When you. When you read Matthew chapter 24, let's start from verse number one so that you will know what characterizes the end time. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the building of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, see ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down and is sat upon the Mount of Olive. And the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, take it that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end has not come. I, I, I want us to note that word, the end has not come. He said, for nation shall rise against nation. We have seen that. But COVID-19 now has made wars to cease. Have you observed that? In the happenings of the end time, there is nothing that will make the world to cease because it's the prophecy of the scripture. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famine and pestilence and earthquake and in diverse places. We have experienced that in the past, but recently we have not had news about that. In the context of the end time, is going to be a perpetual happening. Then he said, All these are the beginning. Watch that. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So it's just a fortress, it's just a beginning. The real thing has not started. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall, shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many will was called. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, then shall the end come. That is why I said COVID-19 is just one of the things that is going to happen. But this is what I want to say. In the mix of all this, the, the believers must not live as those that have no hope. Hmm. Because no matter what happens now, you know, some people talk about the coming of Jesus as if 
is 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 a bad thing for believers. It's it's going to be like a Christmas for us. Mm. I have heard Pastor talk about Antichrist, you know, uh, uh, all manner of things. That does not concern the believers. As long as we are here, Antichrist cannot be here. Mm. So it's as simple as Say that. Again, Say I tell that you again, the truth. Antichrist cannot operate here until the church is raptured. Mm. So the coming of Christ for believers should be a thing of celebration. But the, 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 the way we have portrayed it, especially with this pandemic, it's like, uh, it's like fear. Fear has been instilled in the heart of people about the coming of Jesus. I'm, I'm, I'm expecting him. Jesus to come. It's going to be a glorious day for the believers. After Christ will not meet us here. He's not going to meet us here. We are not going to be here. So coronavirus is just one, one of the things, one of the signs. It's not the only sign, one of the signs of the end time. Ebola came and gone. Coronavirus has come, it will go. Hmm. Hmm. Thank you very much, I this. don't want to drop. Can, can I drop something, please? Go ahead. If sir. there is time. Now, I want to say this to believers. I want to say this to believers. I asked my father when I was a, when I was a teenager. Because from the time I was small, privileged to be a pastor's child, I've been hearing that Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. That some of those our fathers did not do anything good because they were expecting, what if I start building now and Jesus comes tomorrow? They couldn't do anything tangible. And they're expecting Jesus every day. So I asked my father when I was a teenager that, now you have taught us that Jesus is going to come anytime. When is it really going to come? Because now I was very small, seven years old, when I've been hearing it. Now I am a teenager and he has not come. When is he going to come? My father laughed and said, okay, he says you sit down. He taught me what I'm telling you when I was a teenager. He said, I should sit down. He said, he opened the Bible to me and said to me, in the book of Acts, the Bible says, the angel told his disciples, the same way you see him ascend to heaven is the same way he's going to come. All eyes, everyone is going to see him. He said, that is practical. He said, but the reason why every believer must live in preparation, that it, it can come anytime, he said, it's also real. He said, this is what he wants to tell me. That informed my life very serious, very seriously. He said, when a man goes to bed now and does not wake up tomorrow, is Jesus has come. He said, he has come like a thief in the night. That's, that sounds so practical to me. And that is why every believer must live as if Jesus is going to come tomorrow. Tomorrow. So mm. the practicality of it is that he will come the same way he left. Every eye will see him. Everybody will, will see him. But so that we will not miss the, the, the blessing of our salvation, so that we will live within the context of our salvation, we live ready, we live prepared, we live within his will. That is why we preach that everybody must live his life in preparation of his coming. You see, you, anybody can go to bed today, nobody prays to die early, but that is not in anybody's hand. Anybody can go to bed today and not wake up tomorrow. The question is, where will you spend eternity? Thank you. Thank you very much sir, for that response. I love what you say. That gives me a lot of joy because I know, and I know the reason why I throw that question to you, sir. Let me just ask this before I let you go. 
the idea of having a security in the church guiding the man of God, do you support that? Uh, that's a Not tricky one. In Africa. <laughs> in Africa. Okay, that's a tricky one. Uh, the issue is this. Uh, for armed security, I don't, we, we, look, I think we have to be able to ask why. Because if I see uh, armed security around a man of God, and I just begin to say, ah, why is he carrying armed security around? What is, what, where, where are the angels? That is what some people say. We are at the angel. We need to be able to ask why. Because people have different reasons for doing what they do. And I don't, do, I don't want to sit down here and judge or condemn any man of God for what he does. That I don't know the reason why he is doing it. So we need to have an understanding of why armed security. Why this level of security? Please, because everybody is hearing, I don't want us to conclude that I am supporting it. I don't have a security. I'm not having intention of having security. I'm just being objective in my approach that in doubt, I taught my people ask questions. Mm. Mm. I have I've been victim of a gunshot before. I've been, now, listen, I've been victim of a gunshot before. I'm so sorry to cut you short there. I'm so sorry. I like your response to it. And uh, why I throw that question is that people give uh, some narrative around it that uh, some pastors say because of the wicked world, because of the people jealous you that they made, because of the jealousies. And some people say uh, because of uh, maybe some people see that you already have a big church and uh, people want to opt you. And some people say that uh, some of the pastors have done a lot of evil things and that is why people are after them uh, I, I still i still <laughs> not agree with all that. Uh, I, 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 I experienced that i have seen the time that you are i mean you are shot that i mean let's be honest it's actually it's not only that like, the person is not meant to only shoot and go it's shoot to that's kill right. but god directed that's right to, god directed it somewhere else the ministry in order to be something else but God turned it around. And I've seen many cases like that. That, I mean, people have been preserved and protected by God himself. Sir, so, I don't want us to talk about this. Let's leave it for another time. I pray that we have another time that we have this kind of deep conversation again on this radio station. For everyone listening to us, as you can hear to yourself, I have not mentioned that he's, uh, he's against it or is supporting it. It's a make it clear. On this call, but join us again. I'm not sure when and I'm not sure the time, but I believe that I will still have another deep conversation, real talk like this, with you again in times to come. Thank you very, very much, sir, for being on this radio station. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation. Before I let you go, it will not be good of me that I let you out of here without leading some people back to Christ. Because there's a lot of people listening to us and they are asking themselves, they don't have the clue. They don't understand what you are talking about. And this grace that you say is the one uh, that is protecting you, that God, I mean, that, that is working for you. So people don't say, understand what grace is all about. Some people want to give their life to Christ. Can I give you time to lead them Thank to you. Christ? No problem. Uh, please, if there's anyone out there who has been part of this show, and you know very well that you have not... Uh, giving your life to Jesus, that is to say you are not born again. We want to give you opportunity to do that right now. And I'm going to lead you in these short prayers. Please, I want you to have faith in your heart because Christianity, Christianity is a spiritual thing. Once I lead you to Christ now, nothing is going to happen to your body, nothing is going to happen to your mind or your soul, but there is a transformation in your spirit. You won't feel anything. You just have to receive it by faith. The concept of Christianity has to do with faith. Faith in God. You just believe that you have been saved. Therefore, I want you to say after me, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. thank you for coming to die for me. Thank you for I acknowledge myself as a sinner. I ask that you forgive me of all my sins. 
Cleanse me in your blood. Right now, I confess Jesus as the savior of the world. And I invite him into my heart to be my Lord and my personal savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Satan, take your hands off my life. Pack your load out of my life. I am a child of God. I am now born again. Thank you, Father, for your love for me. In Jesus' precious name, amen. If you have prayed that prayer with me, wherever you are, you are now born again. It's as simple as that. And let me just pray a very simple prayer for you. Father, I ask, thanking you for these ones, and I pray that the grace that saved them will sustain them. In the mighty name of Jesus, that your hand will be upon their lives, you fill them with your Holy Spirit, that the enemy will not have any power over them anymore. The hold of sin in their lives is broken. Thank you, precious Lord. I cover them with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Amen, 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 and amen. Thank you very, very much, sir. It's beautiful it's my time pleasure. here in this video, and it's well spent with you. Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate that. For those of you that are listening to us, please share it. Let it go viral. This is not only main for today. You can listen to it again, again. It will be available on YouTube, and if you want a copy of it, you can also be in contact with me. We will definitely give it to you. It will be on YouTube, and it will be on all social media. You can always listen to it. It's not only made for this generation. Even the generation to come will listen to this again. Thank you so much, sir. For those of you that will like to put you on the spotlight, you can call me on the number. And if you want to sponsor what you are doing in this radio station, if you're not welcome, call me and let's do it together. We can use our own to promote your own as well. Any ministry or whatever you are doing, you are more than welcome. Sir, I will not let you go without with a property word upon the people listening to you, especially as we are stepping into another month of June. Uh, sir, can I give you time to pray? For everyone listening to you and for this radio station as well. Thank you very much. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you because you are a faithful God. Thank you for your protection, your preservation, your provision for us since the beginning of this year. Thank you, King of Glory, for making us to see the last day and, of course, the last Sunday in the months of May. This is your doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. We say be exalted, O God, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray for all our viewers across the globe that as we go into the new month, the month of June, the last month of the first half of the year, Lord, I ask that every plan and purpose of the devil concerning every one of us in, in the month of June, be frustrated in the name of Jesus. The Bible says Amen. he frustrated the counsel of the crafty and did not allow their hands to perform their enterprise. Lord, we frustrate the counsel and the imagination, the agenda and the program of the evil ones concerning all our viewers in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we decree Amen. in the name that is above every other name that the month of June will favor us in the name of Jesus. We ask Amen. for the release of your power to destroy the power of coronavirus in the nations of the earth in the name of Jesus. Lord, if there's Amen. anyone that is watching us right now and the person has a concern, we ask, oh God, as we cross into the month of June, let the concern become a testimony in the name of Jesus. We ask, Amen. oh God, that your good end be upon our lives. I decree in Amen. the name of him that died and rose again. You will not have any losses in your life in the name of Jesus. You will not Amen. lose any of your family members. You will not lose any of Amen. your church members. You will not lose your Amen. job. You will not lose your career. Amen. You will not lose any Amen. part of your body to coronavirus. In the mighty Amen. name of Jesus. Thank you, Amen. Heavenly Father. We worship you. Thank you, Lord. I decree protection over everyone that is online right now, over your family members, mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I Amen. commit this broadcast into your hand, the potters, the, 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 the African potter, that your hand be upon this, this organization. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. you meet with Amen. all their needs in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 
Lord, you Amen. continue to enlarge and uh, extend the, the coast of this organization in the name of Jesus. Lord, Amen. meet them at the point of their needs in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Amen. Father. I commit your Thank soul you, into your hand. Lord, I ask, O oh God, that you grant him great wisdom in this broadcast in the mighty name of Jesus. Impact him with great wisdom, O oh God, as he joins Amen. through this career in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Amen. Father. We give you praise Amen. and glory. In Hallelujah. Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Thank you very, very much, sir. I will not let you go without saying thank you to you. To everyone listening to me, uh, if I don't say this, I'm a, I will be like uh, somebody that uh, the good thing was given to him and didn't appreciate it. Sir, I appreciate the call of God upon your life. I appreciate the role that you take to let me be here. I will not be here. I will not have this radio if not you and God. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. You have been the pillar of support to this ministry and you have been the pillar of support to my life. Thank you very much for all my that pleasure. God has used for. God bless you. Do have a beautiful Sunday afternoon for those of you to actually listen to Lord. It's goodbye from here. Enjoy this music from us to you. Sir, God bless you. We will have you again Thank soon. You. In have a beautiful Sunday afternoon. God bless you. We go. This is the Africa Portal Radio, your worst of media house, where everyone have a say. Enjoy it, share it, watch it, and God bless you. This is Papa and Rabi all the way from Lagos. Bye for now. Thank you. Oh, 